So now let's talk about some issues related to lenses. Even if a lens is perfectly manufactured, it turns out that it's going to still produce some aberrations, some undesirable effects. First, I should mention that while we've used um, a single lens to describe most of uh, our concepts, in reality, lenses seldom have a single lens inside them. Take a look at this lens right here. It probably has somewhere between 7 to 15 lenses within it. And so I'm showing you here a couple of lenses, imaging lenses, sophisticated imaging lenses, which have lots of lenses inside them. And therefore, these are called compound lenses, lenses of different shapes. So the question you might ask is, why do we need all of these lenses when we seem to be able to do a lot with a single lens. Well, it's a real challenge to create an image, even of a plane of focus, create an image which is focused everywhere, which has same quality all over the image plane. It's an extremely difficult thing to do. Often a lens will produce higher image quality in the center of the image as compared to the periphery of the image. So, in order to actually do this, you use, create a, you use a series of lenses. By the way, lens design is, is where I think art meets science. There are these experts who know which recipes work in this particular case. And so you use a series of lenses of different shapes that try to compensate for the undesirable effects of each other to come up with a really high quality image. So, let's take a look at some of the effects that uh, lenses suffer from, some of the undesirable effects. One is vignetting. So in this case, you see that you have lenses, L1, L2, and L3. They all have different sizes or openings. And so as a result of which, when you place a point on the optical axis, a lot of the light from this point manages to make its way through to the image sensor. However, if you move this point A, along the same plane of focus, but away from the optical axis, then you see that there is a greater chance that rays of light from this point are going to be blocked by the lenses as they travel through. So you see this solid angle right here is smaller than this solid angle right here. For this simple reason, images often tend to be darker towards the periphery. And this effect is called vignetting. So you see here, this is an image of a perfectly flat white surface, but you see that the, the corners are darker. This is another image where again, there's some darkening of the corners. Now, of course, if you know what the vignetting of a lens is, one, one nice thing is that given a lens, you can measure these effects. You can correct the images that you capture for these effects. Here's another one. It's called chromatic aberration. Now, remember I mentioned that a lens is made of a certain material, say glass or plastic, which has a certain refractive index. And that's what gives it its bending power. The refractive index is greater than the refractive index of air. But it turns out that the refractive index is a function of the wavelength of light. We know that visible light goes from, say, 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. 400 is blue light. 700 is red light, and green light is somewhere in between, say 550 nanometers. So since the refractive index depends on wavelength, that means that the focal length of the lens also depends on wavelength. The bending power in the lens depends on wavelength. So you can see here that you have white light coming through. White light has many different wavelengths of light, all wavelengths of light. And you can see that even though it's coming in as from the same direction, parallel rays of light, the red light gets bent the least, and then the green light, and then the blue light is bent the most. And so, therefore, the blue image, so to speak, is focused at a different distance from the red image with respect to the image plane. This causes some shifts in color in the image. This is an image of a printed sheet of paper. It's black and white, but even so, you can see at the edges, the colors are shifted. And this is called chromatic aberration. And then there are geometric distortions or aberrations. 
Two very well-known geometric uh, distortions are radial distortion and tangential distortion. So in the case of radial distortion, as you move away from the center of the image, points tend to get pushed out more and more. And so you get this bulging of the image. It's also called barrel distortion. Again, if you know exactly what the barrel distortion is, you can correct for it. And then in the case of tangential distortion, you have a, a slight twisting of the image. As you go further and further away from the center of the image, the twisting increases in the tangential distortion. These are due to imperfections in the lens. The cheaper the lens is, typically speaking, the more you're going to see all of these effects, vignetting, chromatic aberration, and radial and tangential distortion. Now let's take a look at the, the radial distortion and barrel distortion. Well, you often find these in inexpensive wide-angle cameras or lenses. And you can see here an image taken with one such lens. And one of the things that you immediately note is that straight lines in the scene no longer map to straight lines because it's not perspective projection. There's this barrel distortion. But if you know what the barrel distortion is, you can of course take this image and apply a very simple piece of software to it, mapping software, to get a pure perspective image that looks like this. In this image, all straight lines in the scene do end up being as, as straight lines in the image. The one interesting thing to note here is that the field of view is not rectangular because the field of view of the original image itself, due to barrel distortion, was not rectangular even though the image sensor was rectangular.